Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a full tank review for you on the Obsidian, aka the TITT Rosanov. This is a tier 8 premium Soviet medium tank that is going to be one of the easiest mission marathon vehicles to get ever inside World of Tanks. So if you're a free to play player, I'm sure you're you're sitting there waiting to see if this one's actually worth getting. It's gonna take but depending on how good you are, about 10 to maybe 20 hours of gameplay inside money to be able to get your hands on this vehicle. And in today's video, I'm going to let you know everything there is to know about this well-armoured, pretty generic Soviet medium tank, so you can decide whether it's worth investing the time into to pick up. So before we jump into the gameplay, I'm going to compare the Obsidian to the Kampfpanzer 07RH and the T-54 Mod 1. So immediately we notice that the Obsidian has a very low caliber gun, 80 five millimeters and while this doesn't really make too much difference when you compare it to other 90 millimeter caliber guns like on the Kampfpanzer when you compare it to a hundred millimeter gun on the T-54 this means that this tank can't overmatch 30 millimeter plates of which there are quite a few of them inside the game accordingly this gun that you'd see more on tier 6 tanks definitely has a disadvantage with regards to that at tier 8 however boy does this thing fire quickly it has an 11 and a half round a minute rate of fire with 200 alpha damage identical to the Kampfpanzer 07 so while this vehicle doesn't quite have the damage per minute of the German medium tank in this comparison 2300 is nothing to uh, turn your nose up at and it makes other vehicles like the T54 mod 1 look really bad with their damage output the penetration as well at 212 is not bad however the gold penetration on this tank at 242 is definitely disappointing when you compare it to the Kampfpanzer's 255 of heat also unlike the Kampfpanzer this vehicle doesn't get special high explosive rounds that can be a real boost to the vehicle's poor 200 alpha damage. One thing that I noticed that was really nice about the Obsidian was the shell velocity on its standard ammunition. It's 1,100 meters a second and on its gold rounds it's 1,300. That makes this thing a fairly proficient sniper, which is compounded when we take a look at the vehicle's gun handling. Decent aim time of 2 seconds, although not nearly as nice as the Kampfpanzer, but 0.34 base accuracy, that's one of the best for any of the Soviet mediums, making this thing very proficient at dealing damage at a distance, even superior to the German tank within this regard. However, the gun handling on this tank is not great for such a low caliber gun that needs to fire often, and as we're going to find out with some of the other aspects of the tank, yeah, there's really high pressure on the equipment slots on this thing, meaning that whether you can fit vert stabs, it's going to be another question. Interestingly enough, this vehicle gets a, a very decent three bloom after firing compared to the five on the Kampfpanzer, which kind of means that this worse gun handling and the poor aim time compared to the Kampfpanzer kind of balances out a little bit, that you're going to aim more quickly after you fire on a tank like this. Or should I say, you're still going to aim slower, but it's going to bloom out less, which requires less aiming in total. So the vehicle gets six degrees of gun depression, which is not special, way worse than the Kampfpanzer's 9 and even worse than the T-54 Mod 1-7. That makes this thing quite tricky to find hold down positions. It's basically like uh, an old object 140 within that regard before Wargaming buffed up the 140's gun depression to 7. So now onto the mobility, and considering that I'm comparing this to a very slow medium tank, the T-54 Mod 1, you'll be surprised to see that this thing is way slower still. This thing is one of the slowest mediums I've ever played since kind of like the unbuffed Super Pershing. 42 forwards, very poor. 16 backwards, absolutely awful. And it has a very bad engine of 520 horsepower for a 40 ton weight, giving this thing a power to weight ratio of a slower heavy at 13. And when you combine this as well with awful ground resistances on hard and medium, but for some reason, okay ground resistances on soft, that makes this thing incredibly sluggish and it will not get up to even its poor top speed limit. 36 and a half max effective speed on hard, 31 on medium and 23 on soft. That is absolutely abysmal mobility. And so it means that you're definitely going to want to either take grouses or turbo on this tank. Otherwise you're gonna end up being slower than most heavies in the game. To add on to this, Wargaming have given this thing pretty bad turret traverse speed of 36 degrees a second, which means that you're not going to quickly be able to adapt to the situation around you. It makes this thing feel so weird. 
However, let's take a look at the armor of this vehicle. Usually slow tanks are well armored, right? And it's kind of the case with the Obsidian here. 120 at the front, 65 at the side. Looks very comparable to the other two vehicles in this comparison. 205 at the front of the turret and 100 at the side of the turret. Looks very decent and similar to the T-54 Mod 1. When we take a look at how effective this tank's armor is, um, it's kind of hit and miss. It, the funny thing is, is it's actually quite thick at 120, but it's not very well angled, which means that you only get about 190 millimeters of effective frontal hull armor. Now that's going to help against the tier 6s and the tier 7s, but as soon as the 8s and the 9s and the 10s are shooting you, it's not going to work out unless you're angling your hull. Interestingly enough, even if you are using your gun depression where the hull armor becomes much better, Wargaming have actually given this a weak point on the front. I know, right? A weak point on a medium tank, on a premium medium tank. How outrageous. There is, I guess, a driver's hatch or driver's viewports here that are only 100 millimeters thick and very flat. So this is easy for every vehicle to pen and even really large caliber high explosive rounds will be able to target this, but uh, you're still pushing it. I'm not saying it's going to be the easiest thing to hit with HE. The bizarre thing about this vehicle is it has these kind of extra track wheels at the front that actually count as collision materials. So you, if you bump these as you're going around a corner, it will count as if you've collided your vehicle. Obviously, you're not going to take damage anymore in World of Tanks, but it's something to take into account. Now, these wheels actually count as sub substantial spaced protection. As we can see, shooting through this part, we're kind of going through 60 millimeters, or actually more like 90 millimeters of space protection before it then has to hit the 60 millimeter plate behind. The armor on this vehicle is really weird, though, because while it does have 60 millimeters of armor at the front uh, and behind the, uh, the front drive wheel, it actually only has 40 along the side, which means that this is going to get overmatched by 121mm caliber guns, of which there are a large amount of them. On the upper part, it's got 65mm of armor, which will bounce pretty much everything that is going to hit it because it is very well angled, and that means you can overangle the obsidian to be able to kind of trick your opponents into shooting this part of your vehicle. Interestingly enough, uh, in front of the very poor 40mm of hull armor, there is 45mm of spaced armor protection, which again means you can kind of overangle this vehicle and get away with a lot on this tank. But again, if you don't overangle it, then the whole of the, the front of your hull is very weak against most tanks. Interestingly, the turret is quite thick in parts. However, as soon as your opponents have decent penetration, this is only 242, for example, now the turret becomes very easy to penetrate at 250. And also, more interestingly on top, it's got this this part of the vehicle which allows it to get its gun depression, I guess, uh, where the, the gun comes and comes through almost the top of the roof. But this is actually only 35 millimeters of armor, meaning that all 106 millimeter caliber guns and larger will be able to overmatch this. So, oh, that's most heavy tanks at tier 8, 9, and 10 are going to be able to go through the top of this vehicle. Now, when you do use that full extent of that six degrees of gun depression, this weak point isn't actually visible, which is useful. And this thing in a hold down six degrees of gun depression position is actually really nice indeed. This tank is such an enigma. When it's not kind of sitting there at six degrees, it's really bad. But as soon as it is, it's actually pretty good. And you can kind of drive around like an idiot and get miracle bounces. But be warned that when you are using your six degrees of gun depression over the front, if your opponents shoot up into the flaps of this vehicle, all of this is 20 millimeters. And so all 61 millimeter caliber guns and more are going to be able to overmatch that part of the vehicle. To add to this, the vehicle has okay hit points of 1,300. The vehicle's camera rating is very decent indeed, although not quite as good as the T-54 Mod 1. And unfortunately, the vehicle only gets 380 meters view range. That means that uh, unless you use bond vents on this vehicle, you're never going to reach the 445 meter spotting, even with situational awareness, recon, and a premium consumable, unless you use coated optics. Crew wise, the Obsidian has a generic Soviet medium tank loadout, so your Object 140 or your 430U crew will go very well in here, with only the commander performing an extra role of being the radio operator. If this is going to be your first Soviet medium tank, I would thoroughly recommend you get a zero skill crew only for your commander on this vehicle as the other three roles aren't really too high pressure. Crew skills wise, with a vehicle like this which relies heavily on its armor, you definitely want to be getting repairs on this tank and you want to be getting brothers at arms, situational awareness and recon on your commander. I'd also recommend Deadeye for your gunner as this thing does have a very good rate of fire and you want to try and add up all of your crit chances on this vehicle. And then I would thoroughly recommend getting safe stowage on your loader as this thing has its Soviet ends up 
seemingly getting ammo racked a lot. Equipment wise, for me personally, I'm going to be running gun rammer and vents on this vehicle so that I can maximize the vehicle's poor view range and also its damage per minute. Even with a build like this, I can still only get to 439 meters view range, which is definitely not ideal. So I'm going to have a second build on this vehicle where I use vents, vision system and coated optics. But be warned, this is going to make the tank incredibly slow, but it will give me enough view range to be able to dig my opponents out behind bushes. Now, for my third piece of equipment on my first build, I would actually recommend either the turbo or the grousers on this vehicle. Now, if you're a free to play player, and you don't use a premium consumable, and you don't have the best of crews, I would thoroughly recommend you actually take grousers on this vehicle and not a turbo. And that is because you just don't have all of the skills that will allow your vehicle to get past its 42 kilometer an hour top speed limit. And so the grousers will actually be more effective inside a mobility slot due to this vehicle's horrendously underpowered engine. However, if you're a player who has an exceptionally good crew, brothers in arms and off-road driving and you use a premium consumable then I would recommend using a turbocharger instead as you will see a benefit to going above the 42 kilometer an hour cap and also you can improve the vehicle's rather poor reverse speed so you can pull back round corners. Field mods wise I thoroughly recommend increasing the vehicle's module durability then I'd recommend inf pr further improving the vehicle's already good accuracy and then it's quite a tricky one here I would personally recommend the turbocharger tuning because I'm not using a durability device on this vehicle and it's kind of an idiot proof tank where you end up getting tracked quite a lot as you angle and you take your shells to be able to make your shells and I really don't want to make my my track repair time any worse than it absolutely has to be and when you add to this that the vehicle has poor reverse speed I feel like going for the camera rating here will just prevent you from getting back quick enough especially if you are a free to play player and you don't use a turbo and for the slot bonus I'd personally take scouting on this vehicle and put in your your vision system for your second build on your bushy maps and whack the vents in there when you're taking a turbo instead but you know what I think that's quite enough theory crafting Let's put the obsidian to the test on the battlefield. So here we go. We're rolling out in the obsidian, AKA the TITT Rosanoff. We're playing on Runeberg and we're inside a nice matchup here. And if any of, and if any of you, considering this will be my first video with it, are wondering what all of these numbers are, that's basically an experience indicator for how many games a player has played in a tank. So you can use that, I guess, to gauge who the real experienced players are on your team and the enemy team. But if you don't want to show those, then I believe that if you're using the anonymizer that you can hide them for your opponents, although I'm not exactly sure how that's, that works right now. So with the obsidian, we're using our turbo to be able to get into position. And you notice that the vehicle's gun handling is absolutely great. Uh, even without vert stabs on this tank, it's all right. It's not going to be the best thing. But again, I feel like this is the kind of tank that I would like to use five different pieces of equipment on. I'd like to use vents, gun rammer, turbo, vert stabs, and also coated optics on this tank. And without any one of those things, then everything seems to just fall apart. Without the vents, you'll have awful view range. Without the optics, well, you're going to have mediocre view range, definitely. Uh, without the, the vert stabs, your gun handling isn't great. Without the gun rammer, well, what's the point of playing a high damage per minute tank if you're not using a gun rammer? So all of these things kind of just blend in together. So I think I lost my engine there on the very first shot that hit my vehicle. And it looks like the enemy did end up just hitting right through the uh, the front of the tank there. Or maybe they hit the belly of the vehicle. Uh, in this kind of a situation, the obsidian is an absolute problem for your opponents to be able to dig out. Look at that. In this kind of a hold down scenario where you're not exposing that weak point on the top. But even that weak point on the top, as I said, is only going to be overmatchable by 106 millimeter caliber guns and larger. Of which in a matchup like this, there's not too many on the enemy team. you got, I guess, most of the tank destroyers. You got the ISU 152 and the Tornvang that will be able to catch the top of this vehicle. So this is where you're going to see the obsidian in its environment, basically hiding its lower plate as it comes around the corner and using its staggering damage per minute. It's actually very strong for this. Uh, vehicles like the Panther 2, which have very good damage per minute, and vehicles like the Kampfpanzer, which have very good damage per minute, they just don't have armor. The Panther 2 easy to penetrate in the hull or in the turret. And the Kampfpans are super easy to hit anywhere, pretty much. And the turret is just the biggest of easy weak points to be able to go through. And so to have 2,300 damage per minute on a tier 8 medium, 
that you can pump up with a, a gun rammer and with uh, vents on this vehicle and even a premium consumable as you can see you start to get to a real scary level of damage per minute where if you're the kind of person who really wants to just go all in against someone or, or catch a Skoda T56 ill prepared then this thing is voracious the amount of uh, your your capacity for locking down your opponent's tracks is amazing in this vehicle as well. I would thoroughly recommend that if you're a player who knows about weak points and knows about uh, hitting kind of like that front drive wheel to be able to lock down your opponents, that this will definitely be the vehicle for you within that regard. I love doing that on vehicles like the Kampfpanzer, but as I said, the Kampfpanzer just doesn't really have the armor to keep doing it without uh, getting getting pushed out of the game, right? And that's something that the Obsidian is the boss of. That's what the Obsidian is there for. It's literally there to go sit into a position and to grind out your opponents. It kind of feels a bit like I'm playing a, an Object 140 at high tier. Well, at lower tier, I should say. Uh, but unlike the Object 140, the, it doesn't really usually get people making mistakes and driving out in front of it because you're playing at tier 10. This one kind of does. Um... When I first played this vehicle, I thought it was absolutely horrendous because it just felt so slow that it felt like I was driving more of a heavy tank than I was driving a medium tank. And look at this, we're just driving along at like 30 kilometers an hour here, even with a turbo and the premium consumable on this vehicle. However, when I started to get used to the speed and I realized this vehicle isn't about rushing around and going crazy, and it's more about just holding a position and really going to town on your opponent, then it really started to work out for me. Now, I really want to engage this Scorpion. I don't want to get caught by the TVP. I'm just thinking, how much more cheeky can I be against this Scorpion? I think that's that's cheeky enough. Really, you do not want to get caught out by this vehicle. And even with the, the Spatuk TVP and its 270 millimeters of penetration, we're occasionally pulling off a ricochet. And when I say, like, occasionally pulling off a ricochet, we've actually managed to bounce 1,200 damage here. That's enough to be able to destroy this vehicle most of the time. Unfortunately, the Lorraine catches the front of my vehicle. I don't really want to get caught by him right now. And there we go. We actually ricocheted that shell, I believe, off the side armor. Now we're up to a very impressive 5,100 combined in the first five minutes of this battle. I was absolutely chuffed. And with the Lorraine lowering my hit points now to 28... We now have Adrenaline Rush active. That will be an extra 10% damage per minute on this vehicle. So a scary tank with regards to its DPM just got absolutely terrifying. The brass drives out in front of the artillery. I'm going to put one into the uh, Bahal. I'm going to switch out to an armor piercing round now to hopefully be able to finish them off. And we smashed out, yeah, like 5,000. 500, nearly 5,600 combined in this game. This was a, a fantastic tank for, for any vehicle, let alone a tier 8 premium tank that you can be able to get quite efficiently with the amount of time that you invest as a free-to-play player. So round two, let's roll out. Now we're playing against some tier 9 tanks, some tier 8 tanks, and some tier 7 tanks, so perfectly balanced matchmaking for this vehicle. Now, I'm not going to be showing you any gameplay against tier 10s in this vehicle. I don't think you need to really uh, have too much imagination to, to realize what happens when a vehicle with 242 millimeters of penetration ends up against uh, vehicles that it can't penetrate. And as the gun calibers get larger, then they can overmatch the side of the vehicle or overmatch the, the top of the turret on this tank. And it all gets a little ugly. This game, I want to show you how good this vehicle is at just being a sniper. It sounds weird. You don't think of Soviet medium tanks as being snipers, but this one definitely feels like it. You might have noticed that we've never actually reached our vehicle's top speed limit, even with the turbo there. Maybe when we were going down the slope momentarily. And let me clarify once again, if you skip the equipment part, please, 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 please. If you're a free to play player and you don't use a premium consumable and you don't have a very good crew, especially if you don't want to use vents as well as all of those things on this vehicle, do not use a turbo on this vehicle. Use grousers instead. The grousers will make you faster. The reason why I like to use a turbo is because I do have all of those advantages and it allows my crew to uh, be more skilled, which then makes the tank faster naturally. Uh, and then the turbo will actually allow me to go over that top speed. And also the reverse speed as well. Having that extra reverse speed on the turbo does feel very nice on a vehicle like this. So you can pull back uh, faster. 
And without the turbo, especially if you took the field mod that increased the camera rating of this vehicle rather than the reverse speed, this thing will be horrendous backwards. But just look at this. This gun just feels so nice. The lack of bloom after firing, the fact that the aim time's not too bad. You start to forget about the 200 alpha damage that this vehicle has, which is rather poor. And then you just focus on like putting more shots in. And remember, with uh, skills like Eagle Eye on your commander so you can see when you crit your opponents, and having Dead Eye on your gunner so you can do more crits to them as well, this thing racks up not only the damage but also the destruction. We managed to knock out the engine on that IS, or knock it, not knock out, but damage the engine on the IS. They used their repair kit so we were able to track them there. They wouldn't be able to go again. And this thing feels really nice. It's, this gun feels lovely. With the field mod that increases your accuracy, combine that with vents, which will further increase your accuracy by another 3%. This feels like one of the more deadly Soviet medium tanks, or one of the more deadly medium tanks that I've played at tier eight. And while, it's not going to be as good, I feel, as just the raw damage output and the gold pen on the Kampfpanzer or the HE opportunities on the Kampfpanzer. Again, remember that this is a pretty well-armored vehicle. Six degrees of gun depression doesn't make it the most flexible on a ridgeline, but if you know your maps, you know the kinds of positions like this one that you can go into that work for your Soviet medium tanks, then you will be very effective at holding, not only holding positions, but also using them then to... Uh, just devastate your opponents and it's just so nice to be able to occasionally bounce that Skoda and you can see after the Skoda couldn't kill me or couldn't penetrate me the first time decided that they'll just shoot the panther instead which was fairly sensible now unfortunately the the poor accurate well not the poor accuracy but the poor penetration of this vehicle rearing its ugly head so I'm going to load gold to go through the side of the Amex M451 but in the first three and a half minutes of this game we're up to a very healthy 3200 damage dealt without just spamming gold as well with this vehicle. So again, if you know your maps, and you know what positions you can try and make Soviet medium tanks with lower amounts of gun depression work, you will do well in this vehicle. One thing that I really wish that Wargaming had done is these front wheels, these front drive wheels. I wish they'd made them spin when the vehicle slows down. How cool would that have been. Imagine if we had kind of like a low rider so they kept spinning when your vehicle comes to a stop and then slowly accelerates again. That would have been a, a pretty funky aspect to this vehicle. Now remember that these front wheels, the extras added on, not only are they space protection for the vehicle, but they do have collision as I said. So be, so be very careful when you're thinking like, oh I'm just gonna squeak around this corner as they will catch your tank and you will slow down and maybe you'll also get destroyed uh, or at least catch a few shells that you didn't want to when you're trying to scurry away from people. So the Obsidian. Uh, I'm going to try and come to the, the conclusion about this vehicle. It's a real tough one. When I first played it, I thought it was possibly the worst tier 8 premium medium tank in the game. Uh, and I thought that just because it was so horrendously slow. However, when I started to get over how slow the vehicle was, and I just took it into a strong position and I used its fairly okay gun to just poke my opponents, it actually started to go fairly well for the vehicle. I'd say this tank, it doesn't have reliable armor, but what it does have is it has like a, a saving grace. You get to roll the dice, and each time that you roll kind of like a four, five, or six, no matter really what has shot you, apart from against the tier 9s and tier 10 tanks with really large caliber guns. More often than not, well, about half the time, or even more often than not, the shell is just going to somehow manage to pull off a, a magical ricochet. And when you're able to do that, it allows you to use the damage per minute on this tank. And there are very few vehicles in the game, at least at tier 8, that not only have outrageous damage per minute, they, they have outrageous hull armor or turret armor as well. This thing is kind of packing A tier, if not S tier, damage per minute. While also, I'd say, having B or A tier armor. And the other aspects of the vehicle, the fact that Wargaming have made it very slow, is kind of a balancing mechanic. Because if this thing was fast enough to be able to rush into position, then I think it would be pretty bonkers OP within that regard. Now, the problem is, is because Wargaming have made it so slow, and it's the kind of tank that does scale with crew skills, and it does scale with equipment. And so if you're so inclined, you might want to try and get as good of a turbo on this vehicle as you possibly can, if you think this is going to be, you know, your boy. 
But then again, considering that we do, we're only using standard equipment in this game, and only using standard consumables on the on the repair kit and the med kit as well. I've tried to make this this review as as realistic as possible for all of you, because I think that's what's going to happen with this tank. It's going to become the free to play vehicle. I do think that this will be one for everyone out there who's got a bit of time over the next couple of weeks who don't have a premium tank yet and they don't want to spend their bonds on managing to pick up something from the store. This is a real good prospect for you to have a fairly forgiving, although kind of complicated tank within the same right. Premium tank that will undoubtedly make extra credits and good crew training for your Soviet mediums. So the first battle on Runeberg was an ace tanker for our 4,300 damage dealt. Gives us a high caliber for 1,612 base experience and we made a very meaty profit even after resupplying the premium consumable at full price. The next round on cliff was even bigger still. We managed to get a high caliber tank sniper and a top gun with 1,762 base experience for our 4,800 damage dealt and our 1,000 assistance giving us a 75,000 credit profit even after resupplying everything at full price. But look, sometimes it isn't always hunky-dory for the Obsidian. I'm spawning in on steps in a pretty nice matchup here against tier 8s and tier 7s and I was thinking, ah, I'm, I'm in a medium tank, I should go towards the medium tank flank. And then when I saw how fast my vehicle was, I was realizing, yeah, I'm never really going to get up into the hills or be remotely useful with bad view range and no mobility to be able to get there. So I turn around and I decide that I will contest the heavy tank flank because surely that's where the obsidian should go. I think this vehicle will do very well on your, your city maps, but I think on your more quintessential medium tank maps, you might leave the flank with the mediums a little bit lacking. So now you notice that we actually did get above our 42 km an hour speed limit, at least for a second there, um, but barely, right? Let me clarify once again, if you're a free-to-play player without all of the paid advantages and no vents on this vehicle, you want to use Grousers on this tank. Uh, the turbo is just totally not worth it for the majority. Well, probably for the majority of players. All right, so first kill on the Super Hellcat. And I was thinking, oh, this is looking delicious. Look at all these players who want to just drive over towards us and we get to farm, right? The turtle's very confident. They're using a durability device as well. They're making their way over. And just look how sluggish this vehicle is in relocating, even around corners. I do feel like when I was playing this tank, that sure, it's very good for getting into one position and in a linear fight and just holding down. But as soon as you get into a scenario where you want to try and stop the hell, uh, the turtle from just advancing towards you, it does start to get a little ugly. Now, I do know I have the rate of fire on the turtle, but he's got the alpha damage on me. I believe he's packing 330 millimeters. Oh, it's not millimeters of penetration, sorry. It, uh, that, that, I mean, the turtle's more OP than it actually needs to be without having 300 millimeters of penetration, QB. Now, he's got 330 alpha, and I've only got 200. So while we have like a similar rate of fire, I'm definitely not going to be winning that trade war there. You notice that we've already been penned twice. The Progetto hit me in the side, and the turtle actually managed to just go straight through my front, which was angled as we're coming around this corner. And this is where, remember, that the frontal hull armor is okay on this vehicle, but it's not fantastic. And so now, I've got to be worried about that AT-15 even shooting me. They've got 225 millimeters of pen. They'll easily be able to go through the front of me. And now the Progetto once again goes through and takes out my turret ring and also my gunner as well right through the front of the vehicle and we can see why look he's managed to actually hit the driver's hatch there i'll show you more on the on the battle hits later on for the those of you who were not able to uh, to catch that moment and all in all now you're seeing that when the obsidian doesn't just get to shoot at softly armored vehicles that are out in the open oh its armor does feel a little bit awkward when I say a little bit, that's an understatement. Its armor feels very awkward indeed. And remember, these are tier 8 tanks that are shooting it. Now, they don't have the worst guns for tier 8. It's not as if they're kind of medium tanks within that regard. But if the vehicle's struggling with regards to its armor against vehicles like this, well, you can only imagine what it's going to do against your 9s and your 10s. And you really don't need much of an imagination. It's absolutely horrendous against most tier 9s and tier 10s. So unfortunately, even the good accuracy on this vehicle kind of letting it down a little bit. Well, I say that, and then it hits the very next shot against the weak point on the defender above. That was a great snipe into a rather unusual weak point to be able to hit. 
Hopefully we can get the next one in as well. Unfortunately not the case as the IS-2S does come around the corner. But oh, what's this? A Peter that's being caught right open. They are, n are going to repair their tracks, but actually I think they're going to leave their tank Amorag, so they're going to be slightly less dangerous. The Tiger's going to come around the corner. I'm unable to penetrate the Tiger. And it just feels as if I can't poke right now too safely. I can against the Tiger, but can I really poke against the Turtle? No, the Turtle's going to be able to destroy me in a single shot. The Peter comes up once again. They're Amorak. I'd love to continue to farm this Peter, but I've just got to watch out for the Turtle here. I decide to lock them down to maybe help my team to be able to engage them, but then I realize it's only me and the VK left as the IS-2 falls to the Turtle in front. And just too little, too late, really. I miss the lower plate on the Turtle there and I get finished off in a horrible fashion. Now look, I didn't play flawlessly in this game, but if the Obsidian is ever going to do well, it should do well in a situation like this where it has its hold down potential with its six degrees and it's engaging against equal and lower tier tanks. And unfortunately, you quickly find with the Obsidian that its frontal hull armor is just so disappointing. This is a turtle going through the front of a very well angled hull. Remember that unless you're using your full six degrees of gun depression, it's just not going to work. And then this was the shot that destroyed my turret ring and also managed to kill my gunner. That's the horrible weak point on the front of this vehicle that's only 100 millimeters thick and it's also quite flat as well. So everyone's going to be able to take advantage of that. And these hit and miss aspects of the obsidian really can't be ignored. So don't expect that you're gonna have this amazing hold down medium monster that you can just sit in front of everything and take advantage of the vehicle's damage per minute. That's just simply not the case. So all in all, the obsidian, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. When I first played this tank, I thought it was going to be the worst tier 8 premium medium in the game. That is definitely not the case. When you do manage to get this thing into a hold down position, boy does it farm. And it doesn't need a lot of time to rack up a lot of damage. Also, I like this rapid fire gun for brawling situations as well. If you played World of Tanks back in the day, you'll probably have an instinct to shoot your opponent's tracks lock them in place, and then get around them. This tank is so efficient at detracking and dominating tank destroyers, even those that like to use durability devices, because you can get your rate of fire down below four seconds on this tank. And when you achieve that, you manage to even track tanks that take durability devices and have the field mods, as most of the time people will have like a four and a half to five, maybe even six second track repair time. And when you do that, Boy, does this vehicle feel good. The only thing that really sucks about this vehicle has to be the mobility. And I'd say it's the slowest tier 8 medium in the game. Because, boy, do you know you are playing a slow tank if you make a 122 TM and a Super Pershing look fast. And so, is the Obsidian going to be the new best tier 8 medium tank in the game? No, not by a long shot. Is it going to be the worst one? Well, with regards to mobility, yes. But in so many other situations, definitely no. While this vehicle is not going to be everybody's cup of tea, I think it is going to be a strong choice for those of you out there who are not flash with your gameplay and want to have enough armor to make use of some crazy firepower potential. And it's a really good opportunity for players out there who have 18 hours, roughly give or take, over the next couple of weeks to be able to get a full-blooded tier 8 premium tank that will make you a decent amount of credits in the shortest time possible for free. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed the Obsidian Tank review. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about this vehicle in the comments down below. Have you managed to get your hands on one already? If you have, is it the worst thing you've ever played? Or is it all right? And are you going to undertake grinding money over the next couple of weeks to be able to get your hands on one? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.